All right, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online on our Tuesday meeting, and we are getting ready to read Isaiah chapter 43. So, let's get right into the word, you guys. All right, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Amen. I guess I'll do verse six. I will say to the north, give up and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Listen, you guys, God is so good. This is Pat's two cents now. God is so good. He's so faithful. He's so mindful of us. When Joanita was given that word of exhortation. What came to me was when Rashad had referred to that movie that we that we saw, Ray, the movie Ray about Ray Charles and how he went blind as a boy. And shortly after he went blind, he had fallen and he hurt himself. His mother was standing there watching him. Now this is picture his mother is God and him, the little boy, is us when we run into a crisis. All right. Now, the mother standing there knowing in her mind, I cannot coddle this boy or he will never be a man. And he needs to be independent as quickly as possible because nobody's going to look after him like I do. And when I'm dead and gone, he's going to be a cripple if I don't make him out to be a man now while he's still a boy. So she watches him as he falls. She can tell he's not hurt. He's just crying. He's crying hardly. And he's waiting for his mother to come and scoop him up and coddle him. But his mother won't move. She's standing there watching him with a tear running down her face. She doesn't like what he has to go through. She doesn't like the fact that he's blind. She doesn't like the fact that he's scared. It breaks her heart but she's got to refrain from everything in her in her mothering instincts to go and grab her baby. She's got to refrain from it if he is to become a strong blind man. So she watches him and she notices that he's transitioning now from the shock of falling and the fear of having no eyesight waiting for mommy to come to his rescue. Mommy's not coming. He's wondering, where is mommy? And then he notices something, a little something tickles his ear. And he hears the sound of clitter clap, a little pitter pat of little feet. And it it catches his attention. Now he has shifted from reacting to being mesmerized by the sound. And he's listening. And he's forgotten all about falling now. Now he's caught up in, what is that sound? Where is it? And he tries to find it now. The little boy in him comes out and he's trying to find the sound. And he realizes what he's hearing is a cricket crawling on the ground, on the floor. So he listens ever so clearly. He's listening intently and he reaches his hand out to where the sound is and snatch he's got it he's got the cricket in his hand and he cups it with the other hand 
and he holds it up to his ear and listens, listens. He is so mesmerized. He is so, I mean, he is just so amazed that this thing has just got him. He's so caught up in the moment. And his mother looks at him and realizes what she did was the best thing. Now, there are times in life, as uh, Juanita said, we're waiting for God to come and coddle us. We're waiting for God to come and rescue us. Has thou forsaken me, Lord? No. No. I'm right here with you. I'm watching you. You're not a minute out of my sight. But I've got to let you stoop. I've got to let you experience this, even the pain involved in it. And see what happens with that is there are times when we're so afraid, we're so caught up in the moment and we're, we're, we're hitting the panic button and, 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 and we feel all topsy-turvy and we feel like we've lost our, our bearings and we're wondering, well, why is God not coming to me? What is he doing? Is he on the toilet? Is he having a coffee break? What's he doing? Does he not care about me? Am I not really his? Is he not really mine? What's up? No, 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 no. The mother of Ray was no less a mother by allowing him to live through that experience. No more than God is any less a God or a father by allowing us to experience the ugly side of life. See, when she talked about the crushing, it all works in with this message, it's so perfect. When you wanna get the anointing, see a lot of us, we pray constantly, Lord, anoint me. Lord, use me to your glory. Lord, I want your anointing dripping from me. But what brings the anointing from an olive is the crushing process. If you want the oil, the olive oil to come out of the olive, the only way that's gonna happen is through the crushing, the pressing. That's very difficult. That's very hard for us. It's a hard pill for us to swallow. We don't like that, okay? And the reason we don't like that is because we we're a society that has it easy. We're an instant society, a microwave society. We want our blessings to be microwaved, micro minute, come quick, fast, in a hurry. Okay? Lord, bless me with patience and hurry up. We don't want to wait for anything. We're spoiled. So we have a sense of entitlement. I am God's. I deserve what he has. I deserve his blessings. No, no, no. We deserve to be clean, purified, cleansed, purged, pruned. All of that is painful. If you want to reflect your father's light, like you say you want to reflect his light, sometimes it comes with a bitter pill. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Each one of us has a cross to bear. Now, even though his burden, his, his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light, it's still something to carry when we got to deal with stuff in life. Now listen, you get a diamond. A diamond is like a little cloudy rock. You pick it up. It, it's nothing to, to rave about. It's a rock. It has to go through fire, it has to go through pressure, it has to be chipped and shaped. That poor stone has to be beaten to a pulp before it begins to take on the shape and the, and the facets. And it, they have to make sure that the there are no, they have to cut it right so they eliminate the inclusions which create the cloudiness and, 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 and dull the brilliance of the reflection. So you want the diamond to reflect from within and from without. So it has to be polished smoothly, but it has to be faceted. And then the inside, it has to be cut on one side in order for the inside of the diamond to reflect from all its facets, all the rays of light with clarity. Now that takes a lot of skill to get that diamond like that. That's why 
uh, uh, there are diamonds that will cost over $100,000. I'm talking flawless diamonds. When a diamond is flawless, trust me, it's been through some pure D hell to get there. It's been through a serious process. Some of us want to be flawless, but we don't want to pay the price to get there. We want the anointing dripping from our lips. We want the anointing dripping from us, but we don't want to go through the process to get there. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm one of them. I'm like, Lord, you know, as you shape me and mold me, please be tender because, you know, mama don't do pain. So I'm a big baby. Oh, yes, I am. So as far I, I understand the people that don't want to pay that price. I, I'm not judging. I understand it. But I say this. Be careful. I'm cautioning you. Be careful what you ask for. Because if God knows you mean it, he going to see to it. He does it. When I asked the Lord years ago, Lord, help me love. Show me how to love in the true meaning of the word. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. I want to give my life away. Becoming more like you each and every day. My words are not enough. Please show me how to love. Now, that sounds wonderful. Beautiful song. Words are rich. But do we really mean it? Because all the years I asked God to teach me how to love. He taught me through pain. People disrespecting me. People putting me down, people having snide remarks, people treating me like I was a disease, like I was the weirdest thing that fell off the conveyor belt, like I was so flawed they just could never get me. What's up with you? You really are special. Wasn't a compliment. That's what I got from the body of Christ. I had to love through that. I had to love a husband that was committing adultery on me for eight years of our whole marriage. My first husband. My, my pastor called it aggravated adultery. That's how extreme it was. Milton told me after we got married, he said, you know, I never told you this, but I remembered seeing Kirk riding in the car with a, a nasty looking prostitute in the front seat. And I'm looking at that saying, what is he doing? Does Pat know? Yeah, I knew. God told me before Kirk told me. So God taught me how to love through the imperfections. God taught me how to love through the hurts. Taught me how to love through the betrayals. Taught me how to love and forgive through the jealousy. Taught me how to love and forgive through the rejection, taught me how to love and forgive at church through the snide remarks, through the rejection, through being passed over and looked over like I was, you know, the last resort. That stuff gets to you after a while. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have any self-esteem. But God gave me a self-esteem I never had before I was saved anyway. So the self-esteem I got, the confidence I got, all came from him because God validated me when people wrote me off. God's love kept me when other people's contempt hurt me. But all the time, God was shaping and molding and crushing and, 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 and turning me into a vessel of honor, turning me into a vessel of love, turning me into a vessel of mercy. You want all that, baby? You better mean it. Because you're going to have to pay the price for it. You have to pick up that cross. All the goodies that come from God, you got to count the cost. He's not punishing you for wanting the goodies. But if you want it, unfortunately, it's the negative side of life that brings the beauty out of you. Oh, I hate that. Yes, I hate it. I've been saved 30 something years and I hate it. I love God, but I hate some of his processes. 
But when it's all said and done, I thank God for what he did in me. I didn't enjoy the journey all the time. But I enjoyed the fact that I knew God was with me, that I knew God was for me, and I knew God was shaping me into a vessel of honor, meat for the master's use. Do you really want that? Are you willing to go through? When you get afraid, do you run to God or do you blame God? Hmm. When life kicks you in your rump, do you ball God out for it and turn your back on him? Or do you run to him and let him heal you with that balm of Gilead? Think about that. Think about it. See, life will tear your behind up. It'll rake you over the coal. Whether you're saved or unsaved, it goes with the package of being a human being and living on the face of this planet. The difference is God. He's the buffer. He's the one that softens the blows of life. So you can go through life and go through hell all you want. You're going to go through hell with or without him. But with him, he will soften the blows. He will shorten the trials. He will always make a way of escape for his people. Some of y'all don't have God. You're still in it. Knee deep. Chest deep. Chin deep. Going over your nose, you're drowning in it, and it stinks. It's wretched, it's foul, and you don't know how to get out of it. And it's turning you into a bitter pill to swallow. Because you're not going to him. You're dealing with it all on your own. So do you want to be on God's side where he can work with you and for you and in you? Or you want to handle all this junk in this life by yourself. You go right ahead if you do. I figured I I handled life on my own till I was 27. And I wasn't all that excited about the results. So I figured it was about time for me to give God a try, maybe, you know. Who knows? Could be. Maybe him, maybe not. Do I sin? Do I not? Maybe I'll go. I think I'll stick with him. And then as I stuck with him, what did he do? Almighty God, to this little filthy sinner, started proving himself to me. Whoa, really? Yeah, God will do that. He'll do it. When you acknowledge how badly you need him. When you acknowledge that you have made one big mess out of your life. Hmm. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Don't think you all that in a bag of chips. He that thinks he stands, take, take heed lest you fall. No, I'd rather God be in my life, even if I'm jacked up, messed up, toe up from the flow up, whatever, screwed up. I want to be in God's hand. Because he is my refuge. He is my strength. He is a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not I fear. Though the earth move. Though the mountain shake with the swelling thereof. Oh, come on now. Oh, I got to read it. I got to read it. Psalms 46, y'all. Come with me to Psalms 46. I got to read it. Because we have to remember who God is in our lives he's not a deadbeat dad or an absentee parent ah wow god is our refuge and strength oh don't let me get emotional because that's the way i see my god god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles 
of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Oh, come on now. Oh, oh I love that chapter. That's who God is in our lives. So when you're being crushed, you have God. When you're hurt, he heals. When you're low, he lifts you up. He's the lifter up of my head. When you cry, he'll dry your weeping eyes. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. <sighs> you have no need to fear. You have no need to despair. God promised I will never leave you. I will not fail you. I am with you. I am for you. You have a risen Savior. He's not dead in a grave somewhere. He's working on your behalf. The earth is the Lord's, not man's. The earth is the Lord's, not Satan's. The earth is the Lord's, not evil. The earth is the Lord's, not Hollywood. The earth is the Lord's, not the government. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Come on now. Who's your daddy? Who's in control of this thing? And if you don't know, you need to know. All right, I'm getting emotional. So I'm going to stop. Um, listen, you guys. All I can say is when you're going through hell, pour your heart out to God. When you can't stand, stand straight, lean on his everlasting arms. When you feel powerless, call on God for your holy for his Holy Spirit to empower you. When you feel weak, his strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you feel like a failure, he is there to raise you up above your enemies. He'll raise you up above your own weaknesses. He will strengthen you and gird you up on the inner man. He will heal your heart, heal your mind, heal your soul, erase the sting of the past. And he will remind you, no matter what you're going through, this too shall pass. Mm, mm, mm. There is a name that is so precious, a name so wonderful to me. His name is worthy of all praises because of him i am made free that name is jesus oh how i love him the one who gave his life for me because his love is unconditional I will have life eternally praise that name praise that name
praise his holy name, the name of Jesus. He is a strong tower. He is my refuge. He's my shelter in the storm. He will cover me. He will put a shield around me to guard me away from my enemies. He will surround me with his favor. Lord, I bless and thank you for lighting my candle, for shedding your light in my darkness. Thank you, Lord. He is wonderful, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God bless you. I have to stop. Woo, he is so worthy to be praised. Just be encouraged and know who your father is. Who's your dad?